Is Quick Joint running in a small window? Let's design an eaves connection. I'll click on the new connection button. The connection type form is displayed. I'll leave eaves or valley haunch selected and click next. This is the sizes form. This is where Quick Joint expects us to enter the sizes for the column, rafter, haunch material, length, depth, etc. Each connection type has got its own sizes form. Well, we're going to design an eaves haunch which is part of a portal frame which I previously designed using Quickport. And within Quickport I use the option copy to clipboard for quick joint and copied the details of the eaves haunch to clipboard. So now all I need to do is click paste. And these are the details for the haunches for our portal frame. I'll click next. And this is the loading form. And in the same way, I can click the paste button and the loads for the shear, moment, and horizontal for the combination dead and pose plus notional are pasted in under the normal condition. If it had been an uplift condition, they would have come into this panel here, reversal condition. OK, click the next button. This is the connection wizard form proper and it's expecting us to enter some rough details about the connection. These defaults look reasonable, so I'll click finish. Now, quick joint has laid out the connection usually makes a pretty good job of this so if we click on the view calculations button we can see or we can just see because I've had to make these windows smaller so that they'll fit in the window for the video demo video we can just see that this is just past actually with a unity factor of one so I can close this window if we want to view the results as they would be printed on paper. We can click, simply click on the results tab and if we wanted to send it to the printer we would click here. And that's designed for a simple eaves haunch completed. Okay, this is the eaves haunch. Let's look at the um, reversal situation. I've just nicked back into the report selected a combination which gives uplift on the rafters and I used a ports option to copy those loads to the board. So now I have two options. I can select edit, paste loads, and I'm actually going to rerun the wizard. Click to the loads, click paste, and now we see loads are coming here. And the benefit of using this method is that I now get to rerun the wizard which lays out the connection and we'll see if those reversal loads make any difference. Click finish. And the connection looks much the same. Let's click on the view calculations button. And we can now see the unit effects for the reversal situation. All looks absolutely fine. So that's a complete design for a new haunch. OK, here's our eaves haunch again. Let's make some changes. Let's rerun the wizard. I'm not going to change the sizes or the loads, but I'm going to explore some possibilities here in the connection wizard, and I'm going to see what effect using an extended end plate has. Select Use Extended End Plate and Finish. Here's the connection relayed out and here's the calculations. So that shows us how we can very quickly make changes to the connection using the wizard. There is another method which is far more interactive which we'll come to in the next demonstration. 
We've looked at how we can change things using the wizard, but QuickJoint is much more flexible than that. Anything in this drawing can be changed. If I move the mouse over an item, we can see the red box around. If I click with the left button, the dialog appears and we can change. Let's move the raft section weight up to 46. And the change is made. Anything can be altered, as I said. We can change the haunch size and the material. We can change the haunch length and depth. We can add additional bolts. If I select here, a pop-up appears. You can't see the right-hand side. I'll select Insert After. And then I'll select Deduct 80 from this dimension. Change. And I'll change it to 555. And that's done. We can see what the effect of a flange stiffener is. If I select the text here that says no flange stiffs, drag this back onto the screen. I'll select use flange stiffeners. This item is slightly different. These uh, snowdrops are possible positions for flange stiffness. All I do is click and the flange stiffener appears as if by magic. Uh, and we can instantly see the effect of the calculations. OK, this is a connection uh, designed by Joint. It's a flexible end plate connection and I'm just going to play around with this so that we can see the flexibility of quick joint. First of all I'm going to change the flexible end plate to a pair of web cleats by rerunning the wizard and I'm going to suggest that we use flexible end web cleats. So I need to click finish and now we can see we've got a pair of cleats in the drawing. I'm going to change the cleat size to 150 by 90 by 8. Keep the same length. Now have the larger cleat. I'm going to change this back mark to 55. I'm going to introduce an additional column of bolts by selecting insert after. Now finally, all that remains is to change the standard clearance holes to a short slot. So now we can see how easy it is to change things. If you want to change something, just click on it in the drawing and a relevant form will pop up. Simple.